The focus of this lesson is on reconstruction. And what reconstruction is, is it is the period during which the United States began to rebuild after the Civil War. Because the Civil War is over, we've gotten through that in this class, but the United States is really still in shambles. It's still not in a good spot. The Confederacy, the Confederate States are still split from the Union, they haven't come back into one yet, and the South is ravaged from war, and their economy is still hurting. One of the things that can help with this whole healing process, or kind of get it started, was called the Freedmen's Bureau. And I'll pull up another picture here. The Freedmen's Bureau was established by Congress to provide food, clothing, hospitals, legal protection, and education to former slaves and poor white people in the South. Because really those slaves didn't have anything after they were freed, and that was a good start to rebuilding or reconstructing the United States, was helping them out with some of those things, and the poor white people in the South. Because more than likely their property that they did have, if they did even have any, was probably damaged during the Civil War. So the Freedmen's Bureau's job was to help with that. But this wasn't really the only problem, or the only pressing issue after the Civil War. The one that I said was really important was that the Civil War is over, but the Confederacy still isn't back with the Union. That was Lincoln's goal throughout the Civil War, was to reunite the Union, re bring it back together, but unfortunately he died. He was assassinated before that even happened. So now we have a new president, and that is Andrew Johnson. He was Lincoln's vice president, and when the president dies, the vice president steps in. So he's our new president. Before Lincoln died, though, he did have a plan for Reconstruction, although his plan was a very lenient one. Lincoln called his plan the 10% plan. The 10% plan said that the government would pard all Confederate states who would swear allegiance to the Union. The only ones they wouldn't pardon were the high-ranking officials and those accused of crimes against prisoners of war. So all the people within those states could be pardoned by the Union as long as they weren't high-ranking officials or accused of crimes against prisoners of war during the Civil War. As soon as 10% of the people who voted in 1860, as soon as 10% of them voted allegiance to the United States or to the Union and pledged to abide by emancipation, then they could rejoin the Union. So in 1860, Lincoln was elected president. And they looked at those numbers, or those voting numbers, and they said as soon as 10% of those people pledged allegiance to the Union and said they would abide by the Emancipation Proclamation, then they could come back into the Union. And they had rights after they did that. Once the 10% did, that state could make a new government, and they could send representatives and senators to Congress, something obviously a Confederate state couldn't do if they weren't back with the Union. Under this plan proposed by Lincoln, there were four states that started to move towards readmission. And those were Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Virginia. However, not everyone agreed with this. Lincoln was a Republican, but there were radical Republicans that wanted no power given to anyone that had been a slaveholder. So we call them the radical Republicans, and the head of the radical Republicans were Thaddeus Stevens and Charles Sumner. So again, they didn't want anyone with slaves having political power. But as we know, Lincoln was killed, so it was up to his successor, Andrew Johnson, to take the reins of Reconstruction. Johnson created his own plan, but it really wasn't much different than the 10% plan. To change it up a little bit, he said that high-ranking Confederates and wealthy Southern landowners couldn't vote for readmission. So they need that 10%. But all of a sudden, he says those two groups of people couldn't count in that vote. Quickly, all seven of the slave states agreed to Johnson's plan. And like I said, once they agreed to that plan and once they got that 10%, they could make a new government and send representatives. So six of the seven did that. The only state that didn't was Texas. That takes us, kind of fast forwards us, to December 1865. Because that's when those new senators and those new Republicans and those new leaders in Congress could go to Congress. And so they went, except Congress didn't admit those new legislators out of those six states. Um, at this time, in Congress, the Republicans were working really, really hard to try and fix weaknesses in Johnson's plan for Reconstruction. Because remember, he changed up Lincoln's a little bit, but they wanted to fix it. And there was two things that the Republicans really wanted to do with this 
readmission and with the reconstruction plan. One, they wanted a stronger Freedmen's Bureau. And if you remember, I said, talked about that at the beginning, and that was to give aid to the African Americans and the poor white people in the South. So they wanted a stronger Bureau. And number two, they wanted the Civil Rights Act of 1866. And that gave African Americans citizenship, and it forbade states from passing discriminatory laws or black codes that severely restricted African Americans' lives. So those were the two things that the Republicans wanted except they weren't very happy because Johnson vetoed them and he didn't want them to happen and that really upset them so Congress got together and they worked hard to override the president's veto because we have the checks and balances so they can do that so they were able to draft the 14th amendment which prevented all um, states from denying rights and privileges to any US citizen and we now define that 14th amendment as all persons born or naturalized in the United States in the 1866 election, the Republicans gained control of Congress, and they were able to pass the Reconstruction Act of 1876. And that didn't recognize state governments formed under Lincoln and Johnson plans, or the 10% plan. The only one that it did recognize was Tennessee. So we've looked at this whole 10% plan that Lincoln established, and what Johnson edited a little bit and then tried to establish and we get the Republicans in control and they kind of threw it out. Members of Congress were getting really frustrated with Johnson, mainly because of that first veto he had. And they thought that he was blocking their plans for reconstruction. And they really looked for a reason to impeach him. They found that reason when Johnson removed the Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton, in 1868. This was grounds for impeachment because it violated the Tenure of Office Act. So they wanted a way to impeach him, but they needed to find one first. And in our government, we had this Tenure of Office Act, and that states that a president couldn't remove a cabinet officer during the term of the president who has appointed them without Senate's approval. So it sounds confusing, but if you think about it, this actually wasn't Johnson's term. This was Lincoln's term. And Lincoln had appointed Edwin Stanton as Secretary of War. So it's not Johnson's position to move him, remove him from that unless the Senate approves, which they didn't. And so he violated that. And so they finally had a reason to impeach him. So the House did. They voted to impeach Johnson from the presidency, but the Senate couldn't come up with that vote. So he stayed in office until 1868 when we had a new election. In 1868, Ulysses S. Grant won the election for presidency. Quickly after the election, the 15th Amendment was introduced. The 15th Amendment reads that no one can be kept from voting because of race, color, or previous conditions of servitude. And that was ratified in 1870. Let me go to the next slide here so you can write down what the 15th Amendment says. So now we have Ulysses S. Grant as president and Reconstruction still trying to continue. By 1870, all the southern states had completed the process of reconstruction. But we still wanted to reconstruct the southern economy. The war destroyed the southern economy because of farms and property being destroyed during battle. Public worker programs were put into place to help repair physical damage and provide social services to the people in the south. So that plan of reconstruction is still trying to work and we're still trying to get it going. But we're starting to run into another problem because the Republican Party is really being split at this time and they're the ones that are the driving force behind reconstruction but they split into three different groups with three different conflicting goals the first group we want to look at are the scallywags these are southerners who joined the republican party the small farmers who wanted to improve their economic position and didn't want the former wealthy planters to regain power so if you think about before the civil war i talked about all the plantations that were in the south really rich people who owned a ton of land. These scallywags were just small farmers, and they knew that if everything was kept the same in the South, those large plantation owners would get all the land and they would really have nothing. So that was their strong position and what they really wanted. We also had people called carpetbaggers. Carpetbaggers were Northerners who moved South after the war. Their name comes from the misconception that they arrived with so few belongings that they carried everything in small traveling bags made of carpeting. So you can see in that picture, that's a northerner moving south, carrying all of his belongings in carpet bag, which 
probably wasn't completely true. It was probably over-exaggerated. And then the other group we have besides the scallywags and the carpet at baggers were the African Americans who were working hard to get the 15th Amendment or the right to vote. For, they were able to really improve their lives during this time by the joining churches and getting an education, but it still wasn't very good. Another good thing that did come for African Americans at this time, however, was that they were able to hold local, state, and federal offices. Hiram Revels was the first African American senator, and we can see that right there. Another thing that was a problem for African Americans, especially in the South, is that they didn't have any land and you're not going to be successful in life at this time if you don't have land in the South. And so what came about was a thing called sharecropping. There's Hiram Reynolds, first Revels, first African American senator, but then we get to sharecropping. Sharecropping is the idea that we would still have those big landowners, but they would divide their land and assign each head of a household a few acres along with seeds and tools. So then those people would go out, they would plant the big landowner's land, and they would grow crop, then they would keep a little bit of it and take the rest and give it to the landowner. And we call this sharecropping. So in the end, we look at people like the scallywags and the carpetbaggers and the African Americans, and they all have these different goals that they want to get accomplished. And so they don't really have much unity in their Republican Party. So it really starts to split it because everyone's always looking out for their own goods. And this is especially what was happening right now. Although everyone works so hard towards Reconstruction at this time period, in the event, in the end, it actually failed. Unfortunately, it did. And some of the reasons it started to fail is, first of all, white people were really upset that blacks were getting all these privileges, and like the right to vote. So then whites started to refuse their own right to vote just because the African Americans could. We also see groups starting to form like the Ku Klux Klan, or better known as the KKK. They wanted to destroy the Republican Party, who was giving the blacks all these rights. They wanted to aid the planter class, and they also wanted to prevent African Americans from exercising their political rights. So people like Hiram Revels, they obviously didn't like. Congress wanted to stop this hatred, and they passed the Enforcement Act of 1870 and 1871. These provided federal supervision of elections, and the others gave the president the power to use federal troops in areas where the Klan was active, because the Klan's goal really was to kill African Americans that were exercising their own rights, like the right to vote. So they would attack those places, but now they have federal government protection at these elections and at places where the Klan were located. So the Republican Party was divided, Reconstruction's going down the tube, and banks started to fail, which could be even worse in 1873. This bank failure triggered a five-year depression. The Southern Democrats were starting to regain control of the South, and that really put the end on Reconstruction when the Democrats gained control. Which, because if we think back to the beginning with Lincoln, Reconstruction was began by Republicans. So with the bank failure, with pe groups like the KKK, all of Reconstruction, all the work that had gone up to that point was really taken down. We see a little bit of help in the election of 1876. In 1876, Democrat Samuel J. Tilden won the popular vote but he was one vote short of electoral victory. He was defeated by Rutherford B. Hayes. I'll show you a picture of Rutherford. He has a nice beard. The Southern Democrats were not happy that Rutherford B. Hayes was elected into office, and they told the Republicans that the only way that they would accept him in office is if they removed the federal troops from the South, because after the Civil War, we had federal troops in the South kind of overseeing things, and obviously they didn't like that. Think back to, like, the Boston Massacre. The British had troops, and we didn't like it. It's the same with the North and South. We had troops down there, and they did not like it. We removed them, and Rutherford B. Hayes became president. So really, in the end, we can look back as Reconstruction and see it as a failure, because it really never totally happened. But the small successes that came out of this time period were the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendments.